Hey, happy holidays, everybody. This is uh, Wombat and Doobie with another episode of uh, Scruffy-looking Nerf Herders. Doobs, how you doing? I'm doing great. Very excited to be back on the mic and to see this gameplay that you have set up for us. This one is a game where I am playing the Rebels and Grant mm. is playing the Imperials. So uh, hopefully you can lend your expertise here as I'm sure we're in for a little bit of a train wreck. Yes, I call this uh, Rebel Doctor. <laughs> Doctor up your, your Rebel play. So uh, as I'm sure most of the viewers have watched, I tend to primarily not only post videos where I'm playing Imperials, but um, I, I often typically play Empire as well. So uh, starting off here, it looks like I have Support of the Huts as my starting objective, and I'll pick um, base for my starting units, uh, I believe, or for missions and grant picks road. Um, when you see your starting objective, does that often uh, influence the way you set up? If, um, if I am playing just kind of a friendly, casual game and I'm feeling frisky, it might. Uh, I think, in general, um, as Rebels, you always want to pick the base deck. It's just more consistent. Um, and... I, I think you might look at something like Support of the Huts and go, oh, I'll go for Road Deck if I get uh, Regional Aid, um, and I start with Bothawi, I'm one mission away from scoring that objective out of nowhere, and um, uh, but you want to think about it more than just scoring the one objective, and in the long run, the base deck is just going to be more effective for scoring the other objectives that come up as well as uh, gathering objectives in general by using covert operations and being able to get deeper into your objective deck quicker. And so I would just say in general, if you're really trying to win, uh, the base rebel deck is always the way to go. I think, uh, is this the game where I pick the rebel deck as well for missions on here? I know I picked base setup. Did you happen to, to remember what I picked for my mission setup? It looked like you picked Rote. Rote, yep, yep, yep. I think there we go. And that's probably because I saw support of the huts and was thinking regional aid. Um, so now that you have Rote and you start off with Leia card, it's, uh, I always recommend, um, in most circumstances, just grabbing established trade re relations right away with her card. Because um, anytime recon comes up, then you're, you're ready to just recon that card back and it's super super effective for getting up as many units as possible that's a real good point because you could pull you have a decent chance of pulling recon in your first couple of turns here too so um yeah i like yes, that there are two of them looks like i'm deciding to go with a spicy pick of dagobah for the rebel base too how do you feel about that selection so um in general it could be a good base especially when you have loyal Naboo and you expect them to be moving to Naboo and then moving to Utapau and then heading up toward Ryloth, um, sometimes you can get uh, Dagobah discovered pretty late. Um, knowing that you're playing against Grant, Grant as Imperials likes to explore very quickly and spread out very thin. So in general versus him, I try to uh, pick populous systems for my base because then once he discovers my base I can build loyalty and continue to deploy there um, and uh, with fear on a remote system uh, you cannot continue to deploy there so uh, that's something that I think about when I'm playing Grant specifically looks like here I am deciding to hold on to Leia's mission card for the get-go even though I don't have anything uh particularly interesting to play with my first two draws here. So I've got the kind of three unit in Utapau idea. Um, and then I can see right away that Vader and um, the Emperor uh, are on a uh, mission from, what's that uh, thing? Uh, Message from High Command. Yeah, there it is. Yep, yep. So, yeah, you... Um 
one thing that's tough about Rebel Road Deck is it's so swingy, because the the missions that are good are really only good early, uh, like the recruit missions, uh, some of the, the the extra loyalty missions, safe haven and regional aid, and so you really want to get those out in play as soon as possible. That's why uh, Leia's card you want to use. Um, because next turn you could draw two recons and you have nothing to recon uh, with. And uh, and so it looks like he opened with a move to Bothwee. I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't open with a uh, message on Utapau. Because if he, if he gets uh, Utapau um, with his first action, because you opened with Infiltrate, then the best you can do is to turn off Utapau mm. with your build loyalty. And if you go for Moncow, he can move there. If you go for Utapau, he can move there. And so uh, I'm surprised he didn't open up right on Utapau. That would have really hurt you. Yeah, that's actually a good thought on both on both items there. And then had I grabbed established trade relations with Leia's card, my guess is at the time I was thinking it would be a waste because I already deployed troops in in Utapau, but. Um, you can see if I would have opened with trade relations, then it would have been, um, you know, high command is likely to go through anyway. And then, um, yeah, it would have prevented that, that challenge. So yeah, I do like trade relations with Leia's card. I think that's a great takeaway there. Yeah, there's really, you know, um, whenever you see imps playing road deck, put two leaders on a mission, there's, there's never any reason for them to not put two leaders on that mission and, and telegraph it because it's so important that it goes through. Um, and also, it's it's pretty hard for uh, rebels to acquire a lot of diplomacy. They start with a lot of diplomacy, but that's pretty much usually all they're going to get, mm. um, unless they just get Akbar or something like that. But uh, even then, blocking five diplomacy is, is really unusual. Yeah, you'd need a lucky roll with Leia there. So not only did I not use Leia's card, I also didn't put her on a mission and then failed to block the one mission the Empire did. So it felt like a fairly ineffective rebel turn with luckily um, working in that I did end up with a Mon Cal and a Nebulon, which was uh, worked out. Um... Another unfortunate thing with a message is he's got Corellio, so now he doesn't even have to move there. Um, he'll probably put a unit on it during this uh, deploy phase, and uh, it'll just stay there the whole game. It's a lot harder for you to clear off systems because you don't have hit and run or incite rebellion or public uprising. Uh, so now that Star Destroyer that's sitting in Solus can go toward the Endor region, and the sooner he discovers you're not on Endor, the sooner he's going to check Dagobah. Mm. So um, you, you really want him to have to move. To Corellia at some point, especially with your base choice. So here I pulled regional aid uh, with my next mission, which I think I'm uh, thinking to myself here, well, this is going to be a great opportunity to score support of the huts. Um, I grabbed Akbar as a um, leader, so I have lots of diplomacy, can run build alliance and that, and still have a flexible Leia. So I guess we'll have to see uh, what happens here with the with the Empire. But any other thoughts on the starting um, turn or deployment on grants or anything along that lines? Um, he he's. He's in an interesting situation where all of his Star Destroyers are heading toward uh, your life left side of the map, uh, which is not good for where your base is, um, but it's a good thing to keep in mind as far as uh, his general pattern, um, future patterns, and uh, maybe if you want to consider an earlier rapid to try to get out of that region. Mm -hmm. um, it could put him in a tough spot if you were able to get to Yavin, to Mon Cal, or something like that. Uh, but it's looking looking tough Let's with all of his Star Destroyers right around your base right now. Let's see what I can grab here with Infiltrate. So Decisive Victory was my next objective. And then I have Crippling Blow or Cut Supply Lines. What's your thought process on those two here? Uh, if you make the right choice, you take Crippling Blow. Um, which is uh, easy enough to score. The And with Decisive Victory too, um, you're making the right choice, which is to just be passive. Just keep stuffing the base 
And typically, decisive victory is easiest scored uh, when they stumble on the base for the first time with an assault cruiser and maybe a trooper or two, and you can wipe that out or force a retreat and then score uh, the decisive victory. And so that way, um, you're using as few units as possible, which is something that's really important in rogue deck because you cannot generate units. And Grant is a very good Imperial player, so he is... He's not going to let you build many units. Yeah. Um, he is going to take his time to subjugate the rebel loyal systems and prevent you as much as he can from putting more units into production. And because of that, because you have the rope deck scoring those combat objectives, you're really going to have to rely strongly on your uh, starting units and the units you got out in the first build. Makes sense. He, uh, as you can see, he ran no missions this turn, so five moves and or blocks. So I'll have right. to keep the, the blocking potential in mind here. Um, and I think that's what I'm trying to figure out what to do with Leia. My, I'm trying to not telegraph regional aid here, so I'm trying to tell Grant, hey, I might build an alliance in Cato. I think that ends up being a mistake because I can't really wait out the Emperor, but we'll see if I can force him into a block right. by playing build alliance here first and i think i yeah, i think i plan. overthink myself your whole plan here is is to score support of the huts so you like you started with an infiltrate but you infiltrated in naboo um which is odd mm. it's almost kind of like a freudian i'm in take the book kind of move but had you done that in say toydaria that that doesn't look suspicious mm. um and it also can set you up to stack diplomacy in Toydaria. And Toydaria is even a good place to sabotage. So maybe you uh, infiltrate there, maybe you sabotage there, and now all of a sudden when you regional uh, there, you um, have five yellow and it makes it much tougher for him to block. This is an auto block for him. Yep. Three versus three on a very good mission. Yep. And uh, all you had to do was kind of stack some leaders. Yep. And this. then I'd be rolling five dice instead of three with uh, Dodonna and Reek in there as well. Because um, the sabotage, as you pointed out, in Ord is literally just as effective as it is in Toydaria in this case. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot. So good, uh, good life lesson there. So now I'm debating on taking trust in the force because I know I'll need extra loyalty to score support of the huts. And also because Obi-Wan's card is not that great. Um, I figure I can get a leader bump with Chirrut on the downside. He does have, does he have the capture card out he, with uh, Krennic's Finest? So, I mean, maybe he could snag Obi-Wan and I could get a point off there, but figure i need chirrut to run all these fist missions and then also for the extra loyalty there well, and it looks like you grab Jin instead of oh i grab Jin. interesting okay which i think which i think i agree with you have um uh, you need the intel because right now um you basically have dodonna if you're going to be keeping leia back to block and you want to run stolen plans and potentially your uh, ob rescue which is three blue fists and so yep. i think that's the right choice that's good that's good now um you haven't run any rapids, but one good thing about running an early rapid is if sweep the area, or uh, under uh, sweep the area or secret facility comes out, you have a, a greater idea of at least what probes aren't. Oh, that's a good point. Or sweep the area. So yeah, right now you want to be thinking. Okay, I'll run run my missions in Coruscant. Run my missions in uh, Solus. Maybe one of the starting systems. Um, mm. Since you haven't rapided, you don't know. Uh, what probes are eliminated from uh, capturing you. That makes a lot of sense, too. Hadn't, uh, hadn't considered that. We'll have to add that to the toolbar here. So let's see. We've got Jin, but where did I put her? Oh, she's out there. I see. We did trust yeah, in the force. Right. Yeah, we're trying to uh, force support of the huts in a, uh, <laughs> in, a, in a super obvious way at this point, I guess. Let's see. If I'm Empire, I'm definitely planning a rule by fear in the Nalhada region at this point. And you only, you know, you were saying you were trying to uh, disguise your moves last turn with support of the huts. There, there's a good balance between um, disguising your moves and then brute force. Um, you can brute force if you have the advantage in diplomacy. Um, it doesn't always have to be 
It doesn't always have to be secret. Uh, you can just, you know, stack Dodonna, stack uh, Rekin, stack Leia, and then there's just nothing. Nothing the Emperor can do. It. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. All I'm right. a little nervous about you moving Leia to Kashyyyk. What what was your thought doing that move to open up? You know, I'm not entirely sure. Um, what it does is it opens her up to getting captured by the Star Destroyer that's sitting in Toydaria. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the thought process there is. I'm, I, maybe it's getting the Star Destroyer to move in, take Leia, and then use Wookiee Uprising to take out the Star Destroyer, but I don't exactly have the, the, the fist units to be able to pull that off right now either. So I think I was trying to bait the Star Destroyer in there. I'm not sure that's worth it in exchange for the captured leader, especially when you've got Vader and Credic's Finest back there to block. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah, I maybe I pull Chewbacca on the next leader, but I think I'd, I'd feel better about that move had I pulled Chewbacca. Um, and then I think I'm also trying to get him to just waste move so he doesn't discover that Endor Hoth Malastare region any quicker than he has to already. Because um, as you can see, he's not running any missions, so the uh, I need to try to to prep. I think for an early Dagobah find. All right, running my first rapid here. When do you like to run your rapid mobs for taking a look at uh, taking a look at probes? Well, it all depends on um, so this. This is interesting. So he leaves nothing behind in Ord. Since he's playing uh, Rebel Rote, you have the Rote deck. Uh, this might be an indication that he has the Ord probe uh, because he's not worried about blocking it for future moves did you draw plant false leads mm. um i would imagine if he didn't have the ord probe he would leave at least a tie fighter behind um so it's possible that that's the case as far as uh when i like to rapid mobe it just depends it just depends on my missions it depends on um if i have leaders doing things that i don't but i will say um as you see on his build queue he has a star destroyer on uh, space one and I typically don't like to move in that situation because it takes you a while to build back up your base. And um, should you move, you would be leaving a lot of units in Dagobah. And if he deploys another Star Destroyer in Naboo, for example, and takes out the rest of your force, then you can't retreat them to your base. And so all of those different things uh, make me less wanting to move if there's a lot of Imperial units on base one. Um, this build alliance in Malastare felt especially bad when I did it because I was thinking to myself, I might just be inviting this Naboo Star Destroyer to cross uh, Dagobah here. Um, but I was trying to figure out if it was worth it to get another Nebulon on the queue in exchange for hoping that it's just the Bespin Star Destroyer or Assault Carrier that comes up to cover it instead of the Naboo Star Destroyer getting, a, getting an itch. And I think part of it too was... You know, it's good to get the extra ship, but you and you you were you spent Jin and her action card to get Toydaria in order to score support of the huts. And um, because you moved with Leia opening up, you couldn't block his rule by fear. And so uh, I think you assumed I, I, there's no point in going for Kessel and scoring support of the huts because I can't block his rule by fear in. Mm, yep yep that and makes so sense that, too. that's another where place where the the move with Leia at the beginning of the turn hurt you a little bit and here the uh move to illum is paying off for him okay with the raid outpost to uh cover cover illum there you have reekin's card yep which this this um actually came up uh in tactics i think the other day in the the tactics channel on the discord but this is a situation where reekin's card is just so good all you have to, it's costing you a U-Wing and a Trooper, uh, or a Transport and a Trooper to score a point uh, before uh, before uh, the command phase even begins. And uh, had he not moved to Ilum, and you could open up with a behind enemy line to retreat, or if you had the base deck, a hidden fleet, then that's two points uh, before the Empire even has a chance to make a move. Raid outpost can and, be uh, such a devastating, yes. um, such a devastating objective, especially if you see it with uh, 
with uh, mm -hmm. with uh, plans, which I did. However, I don't think I was expecting him to move to Ilum there. Um, that being said, with Regan's card, I can only grab one of the two and no hidden fleets. So seems okay for the most part. I'd rather get the one than... Uh, than nothing and the uh the deploy here seems pretty straightforward by not putting the nebulon in the base it means i don't have um death star plans but i also only have one level two objective and he knows what it is right now so i figured just plop them on cal in the base and get ready to score a decisive victory and it, uh normally I, I might suggest using the transport to pick up the endor uh, marker but since you already have Jin captured, you're not worried about Regan getting captured there because, frankly, you'd probably rather have Regan captured than Jin. Correct. So Seems like that would be that fair. Destroyer, that's, that's no skin off your back. The, uh, the unfortunate part about getting Jin captured is now I can't run Obi's uh, mission effectively to get another objective out of there, too. So, um. Yeah, I even think it might have been worth taking Luke instead of Wedge. Um, in order to put Dodonna and Leia on the rescue, and then you can put Luke on an infiltrate mm. um, or a sabotage. And uh, his it's just his, um, with your current leader state, his icons are a little bit more useful. Um, although down the road, uh, you're going to be happy you have the... And you already have Akbar as well, so you already have the three space re-rolls. Yep. So, yeah, maybe Luke, maybe Luke would have been... Uh, a better, albeit uh, potentially risky pick. Uh, Luke is nice because he's two space and two ground in his non Jedi state, and then three three in his Jedi state. And there's only, I think there's only one other rebel leader that's like that, and that's um, Han Solo, if I remember correctly, who's a two two. And uh, Lando. Oh, Lando's also a two two. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, how do we feel about uh, this mission selection coming up here? Would you be running two leaders on a rescue right now, or would you be leaving Jin to her fate? Well, the thing is, uh, I believe you have Rebel Cell coming up next, don't you? I do, yep, yep. So yeah, the OB rescue is not great, because you're going to pull Rebel Cell, plop it in Ryloth or Malastare, and Mustafar, and then lose it immediately. Yep. Um... You don't. You want to kind of be flexible with your missions, depending on what you see the Empire setting up for, uh, to give yourself a chance to sort of adjust. Um, I, I might even have used Leia card, Leia's card at this point to grab Heist mm. in order to pick up the target marker in Ilum, because um, it might be a little uh, well disguised. He might be thinking it's. Uh, a rescue or, or something else and so uh, he might not be as prone to, to set up to block for it makes so sense makes looks, sense looks like you're going for crippling blow here i think what i was actually going for was the rescue my thought was i stood a chance at scoring a decisive victory i scored a chance at crippling blow i also have a chance of rescuing Jin if i wipe everything i mean granted i needed that mm -hmm. that um the space battle to go unusually in my favor but i had a i had a, a decent chance to score a lot of things crippling blow being the least um the least happy to score but still felt pretty good to score more than anything uh, i also thought it was worth it to try to rescue Jin there yeah not a bad not a bad chance. The uh, the U wing, in theory, had it survived, could also have played the U wing card for retreat, but then that would have jeopardized the crippling blow and needed to get needed to get something out of that um, battle there. Now, interestingly enough, I could have also doubled down with behind enemy lines to um, trigger a battle there to clean up whatever was left over. But I felt like it. I think I just kind of felt like it wasn't worth all the all the effort, especially with uh, Regan being able to be captured fairly easy after that action card was played too. If he wanted to double down on a capture, it wouldn't have been too hard to do. Let's see, what did Piet just run up there? Ah, uh, 
uh, stolen uh, stolen intel, I believe, with a successful Leia block. Now, if you're playing Rebels here, do you block stolen intel, or do you think he's playing stolen intel to bait Leia out to get a more effective card played later? It, well, that's certainly the case. Um, it's a lot less... I mean, the problem is, is you have such good... I, I, you have such good missions. You don't want behind enemy lines taken. You don't want base defenses taken. You don't want your single rescue taken. Especially because with road deck, um, you have fewer rescues to draw. You have one fewer oh. rescue. Yeah. And so you need to treat those as pretty precious. And it looks like he is going to go in and try and capture Reekin. Um, maybe, maybe to make a, maybe he has an exploit weakness queued up. Could be. Wants to, Check indoor and get a weaker leader down. Um, also, uh, a better covered leader at this point, too. Regan will be captured sitting on top of a large ground army and uh, right, Krennic's right. finest and also a Star Destroyer instead of a single TIE fighter. Um, so maybe that uh, maybe that had something to do with it, too. Regan didn't put up much of a fight here, so... Um, One good know. thing about it is the Star Destroyer moves to Endor, so it's now three moves farther from your base uh, should he stumble upon it this turn. Mm, mm, um, yep. I would imagine he's going to cover Mustafar with the Assault Carrier because he doesn't want you deploying more stuff there. Yep. Yeah, I think I, I would... I hear you Sabo Illum. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not sure why, to tell you the truth. I think I, <laughs> I, I, I've got a lot of shield bunkers to work through there. I, I, I'm, maybe I'm trying to get him to commit more stuff coming through there. I, I'm not too sure about that. I think saboing one of the three soon to be four imperial units around the base would probably have been a more effective use of that mission. Tough. You know. You know that you have. Um rebel cell coming up and so it might be worthwhile to think about okay where where am i going to drop that and saboing around there yeah um, maybe he still has to check hoth and it's not beyond grant to check hoth this turn and leave you with mustafar so uh, saboing uh, solace or bespin and then dropping some more ground on mustafar and putting the cell there something like that um But, see yeah. where he's off to yep so yeah a uh, okay, hunt, a hunt them, them down hunt them down in mustafar to clear that off and then interesting what is the emperor on then rule by fear perhaps must so basically be basically it makes sense because he has um, burned through quite a few non-starting missions by this point yep yep and then he's also uh just moved space units on top of mustafar too so likely just gonna neutral that out with the emperor hmm. so it looked like he almost moved to dathomir from mandalore mm -hmm. which could indicate um that he doesn't have dathomir and yavin because yep. he ended up moving the assault carrier down to felucia so it's looking like um Death and Mir and Yavin are also possible places to bluff at. Now, because I didn't play any missions last turn, I now have too many missions in my hand and have to discard something, which that always feels bad as a rebel player here. Um, I don't think right. I've and noticed it, that and yet. That's one of the benefits of Leia's card is you can chew through the good missions early and they end up in your discard pile having already earned the effect and now you're at a point where you're going to have to discard a good mission or two. Once and you're also at a point where something like recon is just going to be too slow. Yep. Establish trade relations this turn. If you can, if you can handle it, force out the recon this turn. Um, but more than likely, it's going to have to come next turn, and then it's three turns before you're getting your second trade relations off. Here I am discarding Wookiee Uprising, giving up on that dream of uh, <laughs> getting rid of that here. Um, you can see I cycled Rebel Cell to take Death Star plans with the Infiltrate last turn, and then I've got Krennic um, digging through my objectives right now. So I, uh, I no longer know what any of the objectives are on top. Um, but now you, a plan is taking shape because you have um, a good force in base. Uh, you're not in direct threat. 
and um, you because you spent uh, that sabo last turn on Ilum, you're look you're sitting in a place where another sabo plus Leia's card to grab plan the assault is a very viable way to assault mm. the Death Star. And I could actually do so, that this turn as well with Wedge and um, you know sabo with Wedge plan the assault with Leia, and then I have, even if he blocks, plan the assault, like, uh, I guess I would probably put Dodon on it to be safe, but even if he plans the assault and rolls, or blocks it, and I, I could always use one in a million to force it through if I needed to, because Wedge had already saboed there. Yeah, or use Recon to grab it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. But, yeah, so, that's, you know, a lot of people look down on things like, uh, Re using Regan's card to get uh, raid outposts and things like that, but it's you're setting yourself up. Um, you know, most games last till turn seven, turn eight, mm -hmm. and so you're looking to build up small advantages over time. And every time he has to block a sabotage, every time he has to try and block a plan assault, that's one less movement uh, that brings you deeper into the game where things get really hard and out of control for the Empire trying to block so many objectives and trying to deal with all the resources you've managed to accrue. And so I kind of like, uh, it would be interesting, I don't think you go for it, but it would be interesting to see what going for the Death Star this turn would end up looking like. In theory, if I pulled the Death Star off a extra loyalty in Nalhutta, and then, um, you know, planning on him stumbling into the base with decisive victory, that would be four objective points there, putting me mm -hmm. to turn eight, um, even without scoring another objective and just heisting that uh, raid outpost, that last eight raid outpost would put me, you know, uh, all the way to turn seven, which pretty much would be a, a game ender at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Now, this is an interesting pick for Grant because with Krennic, he stuck Liberation on top and I nabbed it with Obi-Wan's objective, which makes me think the first two objectives are nice on the top because um, sometimes if you have like three good objectives on Krennix you'll put the two better ones on top expecting infiltrate to have to force one of them to the bottom so it will be be curious to see what the next uh, the next level two on there is this is a bit risky you're you're um, I'm surprised he hasn't blocked any of these he he let the the rescue go through uh, where he had a good chance of blocking and now he's let base defenses go through where he has a good chance of blocking i think he wants to try and block at least one of these um, especially with his missions where his missions are just brutal so yep. far this turn yeah yeah checked off dantooine without having to move off of ilum and now he's checked kessel without having to move and and ruined any chance of you getting Support of the Huts. Correct, correct. I would have to spend Mothma's card on Nalhutta and then a build alliance and then still be subject to maybe if he's on a roll by fear up there too, and that seems just not worth it. I'd rather get a get a Mon Cal on the queue here, take away a Star Destroyer from him. And he is heading to Alderan. He he's must be convinced I'm in there. That's odd. Um, but you've put him in a good spot with this Mon Cal because he knows there's a build alliance coming, but he really wants to check Yavin, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially now that he's crossed Dantooine off the list. But the reason why it's so good for him to not have to move to Megiddo with the Death Star is he knows you have behind enemy lines. Mm, uh, yep. At least the possibility that you have it because it's rote. Yep. And so anytime he moves uh, out onto a non-loyal Imperial loyal system, you can just pop that Death Star whenever you want. The trick with Rote Rebel um, to disguise your behind enemy lines is you put Mothma on it. Mm. And uh, because Mothma doesn't have tactic values, you can have Wedge in the pool. And when Mothma pops up with a behind enemy lines, you add Wedge to the fight so he can use his one in a million. And it disguises better uh, what your plan is rather than putting... I've seen people put Reekin and Wedge on it. Mm. You have Rebel Rote that just looks like a Death Star run. Just looks like happen. a Death Star run. Yeah, I like that. And then you keep, uh, you know, Build Alliance in the queue, or you put Dodonna or somebody on it, and then, yeah, you, you yeah, absolutely exactly. wouldn't think here. All right, Emperor's coming into Dagobah, it looks like, with a, Jeez, a fairly sizable force. I'm not sure I bring that whole force there, because that, even if 
you know, obviously that is the base, but knowing that there's an ion cannon and a shield generator there, all it feels like you're doing there is losing a Star Destroyer unnecessarily. Um, and because I have Recon sitting in the base already, I can't counterattack right out to get that Star Destroyer. Um, so it, in theory, he'd potentially just be losing an assault carrier here, but feels like maybe bringing a little bit too much there. Now that he's checked um, Kessel and Dantooine and Endor, I wouldn't be surprised if he had your base pretty much narrowed down uh, to one or two, maybe three places. And so he might be thinking, I know this is the base. I'm going to do as much damage as possible. Try to run through those fighters first. Um, as Empire, a lot of the times I will... You know, I think in the old days I used to try to let the rebels just sit until I had an overwhelming force, but oftentimes that ended up being a little bit too slow. So I think I've changed some strategies where I like to go in and try to wipe fighters first, which is exactly what Grant's trying to do here. And once those guys go down, you know, it makes the it makes the 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 remaining fleet not quite as daunting to deal with this is um i think i've communicated this to you since but this is an instance where when you're rolling second with empire and you have a pretty good uh, force and he has a pretty good force you really want to almost always cancel hmm. um you don't want to start with your mon Cal card because the chances that he takes out the mon Cal are so low but there's so many cards he can do here that would just do so much damage. Mm -hmm. um, he could have flipped the battle. Yep. And if he flips the battle, then, I mean, all of those fighters are dead. Yeah. And so canceling is, is really... And, and most likely, if he does roll a lot, um, a lot of crits or red hits, he's coming for your Corvette, and then you lose the ability to play the cancel card, so there's no sense of holding it. Yeah, so just to clarify for everybody, he's saying, hey, if you're rebels and you're getting attacked... You know, and you don't necessarily want to play your Mon Cal card and Nebulon card right away. The default go-to should be the cancel card with the Corvette. I, I completely agree with that. I think uh, this is a good example of not having a ton of being the Rebels experience. And being in that position is always a little bit more uh, confusing, I think, than not. So um, a, a perfect example here. I should have probably just rolled for the kill, rather like with Confrontation, even though I was rolling with reduced dice. Um, doesn't look like I would have gotten it here, but it seems like that would have been a better move, you know, counting on rolling two damage rather than killing a, a stormtrooper um, with the idea of then he might kill one less. I don't know. Um, well, seems like... Is, uh, you, the, the, as you were saying, the, the, Corv the Mon Cal card and the Nebulon card, you really want to save for when you're attacking. Mm-hmm. Um, because then you have a chance to see what they're going to play and to flip the battle on them. Um, when you're on defense, the, the cancel is your, is your best uh, yeah. bet because um, it buys you that time. And if they play a, a card that's worthless, you say no card next turn. Yep. But the chances that they're going to kill your Mon Cal, especially when they have one red die, yep. is, is so low uh, that you're not worried about um, not having an opportunity to play it down the future. Here I... Uh attempt to sabotage um, Utapau with the idea of I don't really want a Star Destroyer deployed there. If he deploys a Star Destroyer there, that's going to be a rough attack because now all of my Starfighters... I mean, I do have one Y-Wing left, so I can still play the Y-Wing card, but... Um, you know, with all those starfighters going down, if he gets a star destroyer, two TIE fighters, an assault carrier there, that's a big mess to try to work through. Here's the situation, too, where he discovered your base and you scored decisive victory. I don't know if we catch this. Yeah, I think but... we do later on after these passes here. And since it's a friendly game, Grant lets me, lets me play it. My guess is he probably lets me play it in a tournament game, too. But you always like to do things by the book here. Um, yeah, Grant's pretty chill. Yep, yep. So the, um, and, and we saw in that battle uh, both him passing on the rescue and him passing especially on base defenses, how effective mm -hmm. those base defenses are in um, helping you win. Yep. And 
In fact, it's going to take a lot more than another Star Destroyer in Utapau to take out your force with that ion cannon there. So uh, Rebel Cell comes up now um, with, unfortunately, sitting right next to Felucia where there is currently an assault carrier. So this is a pretty key decision to make here. For me, I'm trying to think to myself, okay, I really want to force him to put a Star Destroyer out away from my base because I don't have a lot to deal with it. So I'm trying to think to myself... How can I force him to do that? If I just put a Y-Wing out there, it might um, force him to deploy a Star Destroyer there. But I've completely forgotten about the fact that he's got Soontir, and most likely Soontir's good uh, scouting mission card available to you. But right now, this is what the, the thought process is, is how do I get these Star Destroyers away from Dagobah right now? I uh, also have a behind the enemy lines I can use, so I'm trying to think to myself, well, what can I afford to, like with all those with all those um, fighters gone, I have pretty limited options. You know, I could behind enemy lines a Y wing out to Felucia, if he deploys a Star Destroyer there, I could behind enemy lines more, which is what Grant's considering doing right now. You can see he plopped one out in. Um, one out in Felucia, and then one out in uh, Bespin, I guess, for this other location. Nothing out in Utapau. I don't know how I feel about that. So he, he really hasn't built much ground, and you have plant explosives, and you have a shield generator and, and two speeders in base, and so you could be looking at a situation where uh, your fleet is useful elsewhere, like uh, protecting the Rebel Cell, attacking the Death Star, um, moving across the map to set up to attack the Death Star, and saving your ground to defend the base uh, with, along with plant explosives. You also have Turret's card, and so right now I think you're looking at, at your missions and uh, maybe not thinking about your action cards and how they can be used in conjunction because you want to defend the base at this point with the minimal force required, uh, which looks like it would just be your ground, and then use your uh, fleet to get it elsewhere on the map, maybe to uh, protect a move to a place like Yavin. You know he didn't have Dantooine, mm. so maybe getting out toward Dantooine, um, threatening the Death Star, protecting the Rebel Cell, and uh, using your action cards then to defend the base, because if he moves in and you bring Turret to the base, you can automatically blow up his ATST, and all of a sudden he just has two troopers versus your shield generator and your two speeders. That's a good point Something there. Something like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can see he's got, uh, he relocated a Star Destroyer from Felucia to Cato, I think. So now he's got three Star Destroyers within one move of Celeste. I have no Lando. Um, yeah. What missions do you think you're running here? Definitely rapid mobe. Yep. Um, the so I was talking earlier in the video about uh, how I like I don't like to move the base when there's a lot of stuff uh, for imps on space one, and he just deployed a lot of stuff, and he deployed it in Bespin, and Cato, and um, so what that means is is if you're able to move to the other side of the map, you have a whole extra turn to retreat units, to build back up your base, mm. uh, to make something happen with safe haven. And so now to me is the perfect time to try and move, get behind enemy lines to, to clear out a system. I don't remember the the spaces you saw, uh, the probes you saw in your first rapid mode, but I'm sure Bothawi, Felucia, somewhere you can uh, free up some space. With a behind move happen. with a behind enemy lines here, this turn in real life, I think I spent twenty minutes putting missions down and taking them back up. Um, I end up putting somebody on behind enemy lines, but not specifically for the reason that's about to come up. Um, he ends up soon tearing, um, which gives him three uh, units to take out that Y wing which I think is why he didn't deploy a Star Destroyer there. So now I don't have a, a, a obvious way of getting rid of the Felucia assault carrier. So now I end up using behind enemy lines to 
bring the y the one single y wing out of the base to try to preserve my rebel cell because i'm trying to get as many objectives out there as i can um, out of my hand um, and i think for whatever reason i've given up on the death star even though well i guess now all my fighters are dead but would have been nice to uh yeah i guess uh, is what it is anyway we uh we happened to wipe the yeah. assault carrier with the behind enemy lines and that feels pretty good at the moment yeah, it'll definitely get you another score. My thought process is, is now you see with this move with Krennic, three Star Destroyers and three Assault Carriers right outside the base, and you have no way of deploying to the base or anywhere near the base mm -hmm. uh, unless you free up uh, Mustafar, maybe. Um, but what you're left then with is a position of your Mon Cal and Nebulon and Corvette versus a, an overwhelmingly powerful uh, space force. And so rather than weakening your space force by just bringing out a Y-wing, bring the whole space force to Volusia. Mm. And now you're in a position where you could maybe move to uh, um, Kashik, you could maybe move to Yavin or uh, a place like that or set up to move to Moncal. Something like that where you're keeping your space force together uh, keeping it more threatening and ultimately giving yourself uh, it's less half measures it's not I'm going to protect my base with like half my ground force and half my space force but all of my ground force and then I'm going to go out and attack with all of my space force so, so you have your full strength at both ends I can see that yep yep I think sometimes I get nervous about doing a rapid it, it seems when i play you and grant and we'll we'll cover this actually maybe let's pause this for a second and cover this nonsense going on here so yeah. i attack out with a mon cal and use cheroot's card to take out a tie striker and a stormtrooper not entirely sure why that happened i guess i'm trying to preserve the mon cal and then he counters with piet's card to keep my mon cal in place um, I guess I'm assuming I'm going to take out the ATST with the with the tow cables card, but then that's going to I don't know that allows him to take out my units as well, and now I'm not retreating, and this all this feels like a little bit of a mess. Also, yeah, I'm not sure what you're up to. I don't think you have an objective to score. You uh, maybe you didn't want him attacking your base and dealing more damage to it, but he wasn't going to do that most likely anyway i think yeah. maybe if you attack mustafar and free mustafar after he moved everything to Solus, and you built oh you're scoring liberation. oh liberation i guess that's something that inches me a little bit closer i think i still have three objectives left to go um i play my corvette card here to cycle my cards and get my mon cal card back but um yeah i don't know that liberation was kind of dicey it probably would have been better off just to take the atst out and have the speeder and the troop against the two stormtroopers rather than yeah i don't know we'll see pretty costly pretty costly he i don't know why and then piet retreats this. that seems like a mistake too yeah because now he's giving you a space to deploy to for free yep yep um, I, I got a y-wing so and a nebulon coming too if you think about, oh, he's still trying to cover Dantooine. Oh, um, you know what he's, you, maybe that's a detain yeah, that well, tags on. You think tags on detain? Why did you not try to block this? De oh, because you're not on rapid. So yep, I'm not on rapid. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, see, this is where it, you, you behind enemy lines with all your space to Felucia. You block the deploy, you move to Dantooine, and then you have a transport and two speeders left in Dagobah to score liberation next turn. Yeah. And you're set up maybe with a, a better a long term game plan. Yeah, he's definitely walking some stuff over. We have um we're we have one, two pretty much two objectives I need to score next turn. See, now I'm working on clearing out Mustafar with a Corvette, I suppose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh, okay, I see. So he retreated, so I didn't have to waste the Corvette card. So here I can cancel if he had the TIE Fighter card, I guess. But um, I will play 
no card next round, so in case I don't kill this thing, he doesn't um, TIE Fighter me down. Uh, I do kill the TIE Fighter, so now I have Mustafar free, so now I suppose I can also deploy at Mustafar. This seems, if I build alliance there, this seems like a, like a sort of a nonsensical last stand here, but I kind of like it. <laughs> well, it, his retreat from Utapau which I don't think was necessary, um, is turning out well. Especially since he had three re-rolls compared to year one. Yep. And now because he went all in on Solist and didn't leave anything in Bespin, now you're going to have two systems. Another uh, established trade relations. And uh, depending on what happens with this detain, you're going to be able to reinforce quite a bit over the next two turns. I would have liked a uh, safe haven here. Get those Moncals out on the board this turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> interesting. interesting. And, and again, um, you still have this Leia card. And anytime you want, you put her on height with Jin, And that's an extra point from that uh, raid outpost sitting in Illum. So it's really, the game is a lot, lot closer to over than yep. anyone might think. That is a, uh, a good point there. So this is a this is an interesting point to, to, to show here. So with Wedge, so when Vader placed in Utapau, I noticed Tag was on a mission, most likely detained if Vader is placed in Utapau. Then I played Wedge to sabotage the system I planned on deploying in. And Vader blocked it, even though in real life you would never try to do that. But the reason for doing that is because with Tag being on Detain, that now gives me the ability to, you know, if I needed to, I could roll one in a million or do whatever to try to discourage him from keeping my Mon Cal in place. And the reason why that's important is if the Mon Cal is not detained, then I can move everything from Utapau back into the base next turn. So that was kind of an interesting exchange there. Vader places on Utapau, Wedge sabotages his own system and fails. Tag is now attempting to detain, rolls a one, plus two is three. I do not use one in a million to offset that. Um, and I just try to roll more than a three, and I roll a four, um, and then end up having a free um, move next turn, and I can drop Death Star plans in Rebel Cell to score another objective, and I know Major Victory is coming up here for a new objective um, based on the last infiltrate. This is one of those, uh, I think the lesson from that exchange is when you have somebody uh, like Wedge and it's late game, and there's the potential for you to be really hurt by something like detain, something like a capture and to exploit weakness, a uh, planetary. That's why you want wedge in your pool rather than on something like sabotage, because you wouldn't have to be in that situation if Jin was on sabotage, yeah, for example. That makes sense. Um, but you want the flexibility of wedge with his one in a million in the pool. To block something important like that makes uh, especially sense toward, you know it's probably not that as important in the first couple of turns when you can stack leaders with wedge and, and prevent a capture or something but in the late game when you're moving out of the base and you need to be able to block detain or planetary you definitely want him in the pool makes a lot of sense so now if we look at the objective board there are two spaces in order to achieve victory, which means I need to survive this round and then have Rebel Cell survive as well. Or I need to score major victory and then Rebel Cell can be eaten and then I'll win by, you know, default. Um, if I move everything into the base and he attacks um, and I fight him off, I think that also probably still gets me that last turn I need. But I, if, I, if I play defensively, I lose... Um, I lose the ability to score major victory. So here, I finally play Leia's card, and I pick the wrong mission. What should I be taking here? Heist. Heist. And I should have picked that probably five turns ago, because I can heist if the raid outposts. It, if you picked it five turns ago, you drop the Nebulon in Utapau, and you can score major victory on Naboo, 
and you just end the game. Instead, the just over. I take reconnaissance, and I have no idea what I'm planning on reconnaissancing, but in reality, I had actually forgotten that Heist can pick up a target marker, because I typically mm -hmm. only see it for objectives, or at least that's the most often time that I see it. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, what I'll do here is I'll plant explosives, I'll play one in a million, and I'll wipe all those troops in Celeste so they can't take my, my base this turn. Then I'll attack out and try to wipe out three, you know, units maybe in the, maybe the assault carrier. But there's another critical error I'm about to make with plant explosives as well. And that is that plant explosives, and I'm probably going to get this wrong, can only kill a maximum of three units. Is that right? Or four units? Three units. Three yeah. units, regardless of how many successes you roll. And because he's heavy on stormtroopers and tanks, you know, and not ATSTs, plan explosives with two critical leaders to wipe out three, you know, two tanks and a stormtrooper, not so hot, because he can then attack the base anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so just kind of a calamity of nonsense going on here. I think to the point where. I show one in a million and we have a conversation about, well, I'm not even sure why you would do that because all you need to roll is three successes to kill three stormtroopers. And then after several minutes, we say, okay, well, Jay's an idiot. We can, we can, take, a, we can take one in a million back and then just roll your normal, <laughs> normal dice and live with your bad decisions. I, I mean, when looking at the setup, I expected you to consolidate on Dagobah with Act Yep. Because you still have Akbar's action card. And with your Ion Cannon, it puts him in a really tough spot because you have all of your combat cards and um, and you can uh, play It's a Trap and you can really stall out his good combat cards and probably hold on to your Space Fleet. The tough part about that is he can probably damage your Space Fleet enough to make it difficult for you to score major victory. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, as long as you don't have a place to deploy to. I, I guess so, I, um, uh, one minor correction from earlier, I do end up keeping one in a million on the board because I feel too cheeseball asking to take that back at this point. So, um, so yeah. Well, because you didn't bring that speeder and trooper back, you have four troopers versus one speeder. Yeah, four troopers versus a speeder in the shield bunker. Space units. And luckily he doesn't have, uh, you don't have a trooper that he can kill. But you're going to lose these space units now. Although, the long and the short of it is, is he's making it possible for you to score major victory this turn. That's true. By That's doing true. the move first. That's true. And then also, minor detail of not having Wedge to drop in the base for one in a million to pick my, my rolls with my speeder, which would be nice to be able to do right now too, just in case. Um, so I get to take one card back with Shield Bunker, so I assume I take, I don't know, two cables or something to do a damage at least on here. Um, it doesn't make any sense to block hits. It doesn't make, uh, you know, I could probably play, I think, Shield Bunker to remove damage is the best bet here. Uh, you could. You, I would um, suggest opening with Confrontation since you're at the end of your deck and this yeah. battle is so vital. Yep. You kind of want to see what he's playing. Makes sense. Um, if he were to flip combat on you um, uh, and you were to, say, remove damage, that, that could be a little tough. He rolls but two criticals he's... here. So he yes. can do two on the shield bunker, which is brutal. Um, he's damaging the shield bunker because if he damages the speeder, I'll just move it to the shield bunker. And I roll. I'm screaming at my monitor right now to not re-roll this crit. <laughs> with, with two and hits. And still, and still he has to take out your ion cannon. So yep. he now has to take out um, a speeder and an ion cannon with just two troops, yep. which is, is going to prove tough. So I have my speeder card to damage one unit. He plays Bombard to damage my speeder. He needs one crit out of four dice here. He rolls one. One. Well, and he now... Needs one crit and he needs a trooper to survive. So now I need to kill a trooper and ideally heal the speeder. I kill the trooper. Jin for the reroll here. And of course... 
no oh, heal. But I still have that ion cannon left, so now I'm sitting with the rebel base with a single ion cannon. Although Vader's sitting on a mission, Krennic Finest is over your single ion cannon. Yep. And Wedge has used one in a million to kill three troopers. Yeah, to kill three troopers. When all this could have been avoided by hiding in the base with Akbar, I would have had a much better chance there. However, now Akbar has to score one in a million because there's really nothing else I can do to prevent planetary. Uh, well, you still have the ion cannon. I do. Uh, and yep. He has a one tactic space leader. Yep. Um, and you're coming in with Akbar and the ground reinforcements as well. So yep. It it really ended up working out. I mean, it's one of those things where you you, you can do all the wrong things <laughs> and still have it work out. So now he cannot play a card. I can open with the dream combo of uh, fleet logistics plus flipping the combat. He's got he's got max you know max red dice with the star destroyers, but um, you know minimal things he can do with it first turn, um, and also only one reroll, which is nice. So we'll have to see how this handles. And then I was able to put that speeder back in the base because of the blocked detain, um, which now. Even if I don't win the space combat, uh, he rolled a ton of hits here. Um, even if I don't win the space combat, um, you know, I can still at least put up some sort of a fight with a planetary. Let's see what happens and here. You've now save the Corvette. Yep. Um, yep. Which is good to keep the dice. That's it. So save the Corvette, lost the Y Wing, and did two damage to a Star Destroyer. Okay, so now if you're Empire, do you stay and fight in space with Krennic's Finest, or do you retreat? I mean, if he has Planetary, he might have to, yep. um, to try and end this game. Uh, I can't remember what Vader is on. Uh, Vader also might be, it might be a capture into an exploit weakness, mm -hmm. which he's banking on. Yep. He yep. doesn't realize that you already have the points on the board. You're going to score major victory, yep. and you have the heist. Um, mm -hmm. We do Ion Cannon here to damage that Star Destroyer because it cannot heal itself here either. So even though he flipped the combat back, um, he cannot heal that particular wounded Star Destroyer. So I only need to allocate one red to it, and then I've got an additional five damage I can put on another Star Destroyer here. Um, or no, two, four... Yeah, five on one Star Destroyer and one that he can't heal. So now he would need to roll two heals to heal that. Hopefully I allocate it to that second. Oh, no, nope, I guess not. Nope, nope. Let's just keep making bad decisions here. All right. Well, he can. It worked out. It worked out. It worked out. All right. So the Corvette's down. So now it's one wounded Star Destroyer against a Mon Cal and a Nebulon. I score major victory. Forgot to do it after that first. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, yep, if he can, if he can wipe this, which would take probably a miracle at this point, we're almost to card cycling. He's got two damage on his, I'm at six hit points, he's at two hit points on our, on our fleet, and he's not rolling any red dice because of that ion cannon, which probably is haunting him. So those guys are down, so even if he is on planetary now... Um, and he wipes the Ion Cannon, the Mon Cal, and the Nebulon end up surviving on top. Um, he does have a... Oh, and he forgot to bring those Assault Carriers and TIE Fighters in, too, just to mm. rub salt in the wound. Mm. Big mistake. And there might That's also be an Assault Carrier sitting back in Celeste, too. Is that what I see there? There's an Assault Carrier in Celeste because he wants to cover Mustafar. Cover Mustafar, yeah. Deploy there, but... He moves from Mustafar, and you just build an alliance in Celeste. Yep. Um, where I guess he's planning on moving the Cato force to Celeste anyway. But, yeah, so, and this is one of the things where uh, both of you, I think, would have benefited from just a couple extra breaths to uh, kind of go through a mental checklist. It's not just, okay, missions, objectives, but you have to include the action cards. You have to make sure you're... You're looking at the timeline, and okay, if I, if I score this objective and the timeline moves up one, 
at the end of this turn and really taking into stock all uh, all the pieces of the puzzle and then for empire okay what units do i have to move what systems do i have to cover what action cards and missions help me accomplish that and really just take the extra second because you've invested so much time up to this point you don't want some silly mistake at the very end to be the reason uh, that that you didn't uh, pull the, off the victory. This game often comes down to one or two simple mistakes. Um, I, I will end it with this last minute or so. How those that statement that you just met uh, said about taking a deep breath and going through the checklist. How often do you do that? in practice is that an every turn thing is it an every last hour of the game thing how often do you actually put that into play well i'm a psychopath and so i am always trying my hardest to win pretty much 95 99 percent of the time and so none of it feels like practice to me it all feels like the finals of a tournament game and so I know sometimes I can frustrate some faster players because I'm, I'm always trying to cover all my bases and make sure I make the right choices. I don't always do that, but um, I find it good to have it. You know, when I when I grew up, like going to the golf range or something like that, you you don't want to spend your time just hitting balls. You want to always make sure you're aiming at something and adjusting and using even the practice time because you're building up habits. And so if your habit is to, in the practice games, to, to go quickly and to kind of play a little messy and a little sloppy, then it's hard to turn that off even in a game that matters. And so I always like to practice the way that I would play when I'm playing at my fullest. I love it. There's, a, there's definitely a t-shirt quote in there. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to get that uh, whenever I get around to adding a store onto the channel and putting that in there. <laughs> always make sure you're aiming at something. All right, man. What? Well, Hey, thanks for um, hopping on and, uh, and doing this one. I think this is our fourth um, episode out yes. and have a couple other good ones in mind, too. Um, thanks to everybody who was watching. And if you haven't, please like and subscribe. We got another series of these coming out here this upcoming year. If you haven't signed, uh, signed into the Discord channel, make sure to click the link below. We're going to be rolling out uh, 2022 three tournament instructions here shortly um, so please check us out on discord and uh, say hello we will see you guys around